Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. The US stock market went through a very eventful week with lots of earnings and economic news. Despite that, the three major indexes notched their fourth consecutive weeks of gains, with S&P 500 pushing towards the 5000 mark. All thanks to Meta and Amazon as they smashed their earnings expectations. Amazon popped close to 8% while Meta jumped by a whopping 20% last Friday. As a result, Meta saw its market cap rose by around $200 billion. And mind you, this is the biggest ever single day increase in the history of the US stock market. At this very moment, it appears that every single pullback has been met by buyers sweeping up stocks and therefore triggering a rally. The current rally has been nothing but explosive. And so, the golden question right now is, how long can this rally last? Meanwhile, I have recorded a live option trade that I took last week, so do watch on to find out more. Alright, in case you're not aware, the US stock market rally actually struggled mid last week as Jerome Powell came out to spook the market by ruling out the possibility of a rate cut in March. Here's what he said. Based on the meeting today, I would tell you that I don't think it's likely that a committee will reach a level of confidence by the time of the March meeting. As a result of his speech, the stock market experienced the worst sell-off in months as investors' hope of an early rate cut was dampened. But just when some investors thought that the market pullback would continue, a day later, the market rose. And then, on Friday, almost the entire stock market rallied further with the S&P 500 setting yet another record high, and tech-heavy Nasdaq rebounded to a two-year high. These gains were driven by the various big tech stocks, such as Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, and Nvidia. What I personally found interesting is that the rally in the tech industry has actually shifted investors' focus away from an unexpectedly hot jobs report that was released on Friday. Basically, the latest job report indicated an acceleration in hiring as the US economy added 353,000 jobs, which blew past Wall Street expectations of 185,000. The unemployment rate remained unchanged at 3.7%, but it's lower than the estimate of 3.8%. So what does a strong labour market mean to the stock market? To explain in simple terms, Though the report demonstrated a resilient US economy, it also raises questions about how soon the Federal Reserve will be able to lower interest rates. That's because more jobs and higher wages almost equate to strong consumer spendings. And the more people spend, the higher the chance for inflation to tick up again. In short, the Fed has to find a sweet spot and timing to implement the very first rate cut this year. Alright, all being said, we have put behind us a very eventful week. Let's now have a look at the week ahead. For this week, investors will likely continue to digest both Jerome Powell's speech as well as the results of the various big tech companies. They will continue to adjust their expectations and probably acknowledge that interest rate cut will not arrive until May or maybe even second half of the year. I mean, a stronger than expected jobs report means that the Fed is in no rush to cut rates as the labour market and the larger US economy are still intact. There is no sign of recession, at least for now. On the earnings front, we have lots of consumer brands, media and tech firms reporting this week. Some notable ones are Disney, McDonald's, Pepsi, Spotify, Snap, Estee Lauder and retail favourite Palantir. In my view, they will likely not move the market as much as the mega cap tech giants we saw last week. Let's now cover the technical analysis portion. Well, well, SPY is showing us a classic textbook bullish movement. If you had followed my past two videos, you will know that I talk about something that I was watching, and that is whether we can have a retracement outside of the uptrend channel, test the channel line, and then rebound. SPY did exactly that. This simply means bullish. In fact, with that retracement, it could off the RSI indicator giving it more room to go up, which also means SPY has more room to run up as well. 
So, in terms of the bullish thesis, it's quite straightforward from this point. As long as SPY does not fall back into the uptrend channel and the MACD doesn't start crossing down, the 500 level is very much inside this or next week. Okay, as much as I am leaning towards bullish this week for SPY, I could be wrong. So, I am always ready to admit that I am wrong by laying out the bearish thesis. It's like if a particular bearish scenario happens, then I'll be like, okay, I am wrong, I have to adjust and adapt and pivot to the bearish side if necessary. Anyway, that kind of bearish scenario that I am talking about is SPY falling back into the uptrend channel. But to be more specific, we need at least two red candles with volume to get the bearish confirmation. And last Wednesday was actually an example of non-confirmation where we saw one big fat red candle eating into the uptrend channel. But the very next day, the market rebounded. So that's not a bearish confirmation. But let's say we had two red candles in the channel, it's not all over yet for the bulls. Don't be too worried. It could well be a healthy retracement for the market. I will only turn cautious and maybe lean towards the bearish side if only 470 to 475 get breached. I know it may sound like a big range considering SPY doesn't move 5 to 10 points easily. But check out this range, it was actually a mini consolidation zone between mid-December to mid-January before we had that breakout to all-time high. In other words, if the pullback at the start of the year couldn't break this zone, it means there is a cushion here. Which then means, if this area gets breached, the best will have a decent chance to bring SPY all the way down to below 465. Okay, let's now hop over to Apple. Ladies and gentlemen, you can pull out my last video, which is linked at the top anyway. In that video, I specifically mentioned that I was leaning towards the bearish can for Apple last week, and Apple's share price fell more than 3%. But there is one damn huge green candlestick last Friday which made things more interesting for Apple. Okay, let's dissect it. First and foremost, what happened last Friday was that Apple opened the trading session with a huge gap down. But buyers stepped in to push the share price back up. That's bullish, despite Apple closing 0.5% lower. I mean, it could have been worse. Another thing to highlight, which I have shared before, is that Apple has a good record of bouncing off the 200 moving average in this latest monster rally that started a year ago, back in January 2023. Okay, for this week, how do we know if the bullish momentum is continuing? Simple, watch the 200 moving average closely again, and watch the range 180 to 185 as well. For the 200 moving average, I have already explained. As for that range of 180 to 185, if you had noticed, just recently, we had two occasions where Apple fell to this range, and it bounced up. Last Friday was the third time. So come Monday and Tuesday, if we can get higher lows, in other words, the intraday low of each day does not fall below the low of the previous trading days, Apple has a decent chance of grinding up back to 190's range. Alright, before I cover the bearish thesis, can I do a quick shout out? A huge thank you to Super Kony who bought me a cup of coffee via my coffee link. Appreciate that. Meanwhile, if you found my content useful, do consider buying me a coffee as well. Or maybe a YouTube super thanks, so that I can cash out my first ever paycheck from YouTube. If not, the free method of supporting this channel is to simply tap on the like and subscribe buttons. And if possible, share it with your friends as well, so that my channel can grow faster. Alright, in terms of the bearish thesis for Apple, well, as mentioned earlier, the bulls have to protect the 200 moving average. If we were to print 2 or 3 red candles below it, with lower intraday lows, that's bearish. That's also when you may want to be careful if you're holding on to call options. And in my view, the last line of defense lies at 178.5, where the critical 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level is. If that breaks, well, I think we could see low 170s or maybe even kiss 160s range soon. Okay, moving over to Tesla's chart. I was expecting some form of short-term bounce last week. Well, Tesla did go up by about 2.5% and ended a six consecutive losing weeks. 
but to be really honest with you, I was expecting a little bit more. I thought we could at least close above 190, but unfortunately, there was quite a fair bit of negative news. Anyway, this is the technical analysis segment, so I won't be covering the news portion. Looking at the chart, you will be able to see that Tesla is trading sideways right now, within this mini consolidation zone of about 180 to low 190s. And I got to say that Tesla's chart is really more interesting than any other stocks. I mean, apart from being so volatile and so easily affected by news, by Elon Musk and by price cuts of its vehicle, even the chart is one of a kind. So last Wednesday and Thursday, we had two doji candlesticks, called the Greystone and Dragonfly respectively. The former is a bearish one, while the latter is a bullish one. So basically, they are contradicting each other. But as I have always shared, don't look at only one indicator, because it's obvious that both candlesticks don't show any confirmation of further decline or a reversal of the current bearish trend. Alright, for this week, watch 180. 180 is one important support level, simply because since we had that post earnings gap down, bears have not been able to bring Tesla below this 180 level, despite the various negative news last week. So if 180 gets breached, I am not very hopeful of the stock in the near term, as I am of the view that we will slowly grind down to 160s range, almost ignoring the 170s range. Just to add on, we have a death cross on the daily chart as the 50 moving average crosses below the 200 moving average. The last time we had this cross was back in May 2022, and Tesla consolidated for a while, went up a little bit, then plummeted soon after. But here's my personal take. Because such poor earnings and iffy guidance of its company outlook for this year, combined with Elon Musk's salary package getting rejected, price cuts in Canada, no interest rate cut in March from the Fed, all this bad news, somehow Tesla can still stay above 180. That's a saving grace for the bulls. Well, I could be wrong, but I think if there is no further negative catalyst or news this week, Tesla could be going sideways and eventually grind up to 190s range. From there, watch that gap, which is between 196 to 206. If we can have a complete gap view and doesn't get rejected at the top end of the gap, that's very bullish. Perhaps about two green candles above this gap will sort of give us some confirmation that Tesla has a short-term reversal in bearish trend, and we could be headed towards 220. To add on, watch that MACD. If MACD starts curling up, a bigger bounce could be on the cards. Finally, another good news for the bulls, check out the weekly chart. It appears to me that there is a bullish Harami candlestick pattern forming, which gives bulls more hope this week. With the above being said, all this bullish thesis will be invalidated if 180 breaks. Now let's cover Google's chart. Um, sometimes you really got to believe in technical analysis, man. Check out how Google got rejected so nicely at the all-important 161.8 Fibonacci extension level. Okay, I guess it's kind of obvious that Google was bearish last week as it not only had a gap down, it even fell slightly out of the bottom end of this uptrend channel. But this bull market is really incredible as almost every dip saw buyers stepping in and we saw that in Google as it ended last Friday with positive gain. For this particular week, watch the critical 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level of 142, where Google is currently sitting at. If we can stay above this level, or even reclaim 144.5, that means last Friday was the start of this mini reversal in trend. From this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Google continues to climb higher to fill this big gap between 144 to 151. Just to add on, there is a bullish divergence forming on the RSI, and if Monday's close is higher than last Friday's close, and if the intraday low doesn't fall below Friday's intraday low, I would say that's a good sign that bullish momentum is continuing. In fact, I was trying to sell a cash secure put on Friday, which is a slightly bullish move, but couldn't find a good entry point. 
On the other hand, the bullish thesis will be invalidated if Google closes below the green uptrend channel line for two days or so, and also closes below the 50 moving average. When this happens, it's a signal for you to be cautious and to stand by to switch towards the bearish side. For full-blown bearish momentum to happen, Google has to take down the recent low of 135. If this level gets breached, good luck to the bulls, because it may continue to fall further to 130 or 128. Let's now move over to the options trading section. If you could recall, I shared in my last video that I have accepted the assignment of 100 Tesla shares at 190 strike price. With this, on Friday, 2nd February, I sold a covered call on this 100 shares and received a premium of $500 in the process. The strike price is $200 and expiration date is on 15 March 2024. As shared earlier, I thought Tesla could bounce up a little more when it hit 196 last Tuesday. But unfortunately, the next two days saw a few negative news of Tesla and the stock price went down a little more, though it was still up for last week. Okay, reason why I wanted to sell a cover call when a stock price is at a higher price is because I can select a higher strike price and also get a better premium. So on Friday, I was contemplating if I should wait till this week for a potential bounce. But Tesla being Tesla, it's so unpredictable. Therefore, I settled for a $200 strike price with $500 premium. Okay, in case you are new to options trading, just to share, the image on the right is not the loss incurred. There is no need for me to buy back the contract if I don't want to. In fact, this can be classified as an almost sure win trade. Okay, I try not to use such strong words, but allow me to explain. Come this week, if Tesla bounces up, followed by a monster rally in the next one month, and closes above my strike price of $200 on expiration date, I can let the 100 shares get caught away at $200 per share. But don't forget, I got them at $190 per share. Therefore, my profit for this would be $1,000. And after adding in the earlier premium of $500, the total profit will be $1,500. On the other hand, let's say we don't get a bounce this week or this month for that matter, and Tesla continues to fall from here, my profit will be the premium of $500. I then get to retain this 100 shares at $190 per share, which I am totally okay with it. So all in all, it is a win-win situation for me regardless of Tesla's movement in the next one month. It is just a matter of how much I can profit from this trade. This is called the options wheel strategy. I have done a video on this, check it out if you haven't. Okay, with all being said, I don't want to mislead viewers. There will be a scenario where I will lose money, but not from this option trade per se. It's on the 100 shares that I own. I will lose money if Tesla never ever recovers above 190 again. Or worse still, Tesla crashes to zero and the company gets dissolved. That is when I will lose the full 19,000. But what are the odds? Well, I am not here to debate on that, so I will leave it to you to assess the probability. Anyway, here's the live recording of the covered call that I have sold. Last Friday during intraday, I saw Tesla was rebounding. So I click on the options page, select 15 March as the expiration date, then I scroll down to my desired strike price of $200. Click on it, I'm okay with the $5 premium, and then I proceeded to enter my password, and click on the sell button, and then order submitted. After which I had to wait for about 2 minutes before my order got fulfilled from around 2.08 a.m. to 2.10 a.m. And there you go, ordered field. Next, I have two option contracts that are expiring this Friday, 9th of February. The first one is this covered call on Tesla that I saw on 29 December, the last trading day of 2023, with a strike price of 315. Back then, Tesla was at 240s to 250s range. Well, the short version of the rationale behind this trade was that I saw a few bearish signals, such as bearish divergence on RSI, bearish engulfing candle, etc. 
and since I made that trade, Tesla has been on a free fall mode as it plummeted from 250s range to 180s range. For more information on this trade, please check out the video linked at the top. Anyway, my strike price was never in danger of getting breached at all as Tesla didn't even go close to $300. So unless Tesla rallies more than 67% this week, my contract should expire worthless and I will get to keep the premium and profit of 212 without having to take further action such as closing the position. The next option contract that is expiring this Friday is this cash secure put on Apple with a strike price of 175 this contract was sold back in 2nd January this year. On that day, market was overreacting to the downgrade by Barclays. So I seized the opportunity when there was fear in the market by opening this slightly bullish trade. Again, for more information on this trade, please check out the link at the top. Since then, Apple went on a roller coaster ride by searching after an upgrade by Bank of America and then fell back down again with a less than impressive earnings. Right now, it is sitting at 185, and if it doesn't fall below my 175 strike price this Friday, the profit for this trade will be $180. Well, well, the US economy and labor market are showing robust strength and health, posing the question of whether inflation could tick up again. At one point, investors were also spooked by the Federal Reserve rate cut expectations. To add on, the 10-year Treasury yield jumped more than 16.8 basis points on last Friday to 4.03%, which is its largest daily gain since September 2022. But despite all this, stocks continue to rocket higher anyway, with the S&P 500 recording another all-time high. This simply shows one thing, that all these macro factors are not significant enough to derail the stock market's hope of a soft landing. And also, fundamentals of companies do matter at the end of the day when it comes to investing. Short-term news and macro stuff are just noises. And this is definitely one good reminder for long-term investors to spend time understanding the fundamentals of a company that you are investing or invested in, and also look further ahead, basically to have a longer time horizon. Talking about companies' fundamentals and earnings, last two weeks' individual big tech stocks' performance had shown us that the market can be unforgiving if companies don't deliver or perform up to expectations. As you can see, Tesla, Google, Apple, and maybe Microsoft were on the receiving end as investors nitpick on perceived weak points in their earnings report and guidance for the year. And I believe this sort of expectations will continue for the entire year unless there is a recession or some black swan event, that's a different story. Otherwise, to investors, doing merely great is not going to make the cut. Those tech and AI companies need to outperform and give a better than expected report cut to prevent any sell-off. Meanwhile, going back to the other driver of the stock market, interest rate cuts. As shared in my previous videos, I was quite perplexed as to why the market was initially expecting a rate cut in March. The odds was as high as 60% if I could recall correctly. According to Bill Adams, the chief economist for Comerical Bank, he said that the Fed was badly burned in late 2021 and 2022 when they thought high inflation would be transitory, then got caught by surprise when it was higher and more persistent than expected. They want to avoid making the same mistake twice. And I completely agree with his view. I mean, I am quite sure that the Fed would want to err on the safe side. Therefore, I was puzzled as to why the market was expecting an early rate cut before last week. So, in my opinion, it's good that Powell has poured cold water onto the stock market in his recent speech, and investors are finally acknowledging that we are not gonna have a rate cut in March. Anyway, what amazed me was that I previously shared that we can expect a pullback when the market starts to align their rate cut expectations with the Feds, and we had that. We had a worse sell-off in months during last Wednesday's session, but it's just incredible how the market rebounded so quickly the very next day. It seems like every single dip or decline in this bull market is being bought up by buyers. Look at this weekly chart of SPY, 13 green weeks in 14. 
as much as I am excited about this monster rally and that my portfolio is in the green, it does somehow remind me of 2021's bull market, which was then followed by a crash. Okay, but before you take things out of context, I am not saying a crash will happen this year. In fact, I think that unless key support level breaks, the SPX and SPY have a chance of hitting 5,000 and 500 respectively sooner than I had expected. Meanwhile, there is really no cause of concern whenever there is a pullback here and there. Again, unless of course key support levels get breached, in which I will update viewers again. So do subscribe to my channel if you have not, like and share and I will see you again next week. Thank you.